Number 50. How much heat is produced when 100 mils of 0.25 molarity HCl with a density of 1.00 grams per mil and 200 mils of 0.15 molarity NaOH with a density of 1.00 grams per mil are mixed? And then they give us the balanced equation, right? Hydrochloric acid HCl plus sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, when they get mixed together, we get a salt, sodium chloride, aka table salt, and water. Now, in this case, they gave us the delta H of this reaction. Now, the first thing is that they should have really put this as a kilojoule per mole, okay? Delta H values are always in kilojoules per mole. That's the standard unit. So just background on what a delta H is. Delta H is enthalpy. I remember this when I was learning this, that there was an H in enthalpy and an H for, you know, what the word enthalpy is. Later down the road, you're going to learn about entropy, and sometimes students get confused with enthalpy and entropy. The H1 is your delta H. Now, what an enthalpy is, it's basically just talking about heat energy. So if you keep going along the roads of the H's, enthalpy, H, heat. H, you know, H for heat. So this is talking about the amount of heat that is either being produced or released, you know, absorbed or released in this reaction. So, for example, for this one, I can say that for every one mole, or actually, it's not always going to be one mole. So I'll just going to say for right now, for a mole of a compound, right? So maybe I'll just box this off. So for X amount of moles of the compound in the formula, I will release the negative 58 kilojoules, all right? Now, the, the thing here is that, just remember guys, that there's no such thing as negative energy, all right? The negative is just telling us that the energy is being released. So when they're asking for the answer, how much heat is produced, we don't give the negative number. That's basically telling your teacher or professor that you have negative amount of energy. But they just want the positive number, right? The amount of heat that's produced is, I don't know, one kilojoule. The negative would just mean that it's released into the surroundings or the environment. So now, the thing is, is that what compound am I going to use in this equation, right? We have four compounds. Well, ch chances are we're going to use the ones that we have information for. So let's write out this formula first, okay? So we have HCl, no one cares about the states, so I don't write them. No one cares. So we have HCl plus NaOH yields NaCl plus H2L. And then, once again, the delta H for this reaction, this little notch up here just means standard conditions. So it comes from tables or like appendix in the back of your textbooks. So they did the math for you. They said that this was 58 kilojoules per mole. Okay. But now I have information for two of the compounds. Let's write them down. I have 100 mils for the 0 0.25 molarity of the HCl, and I have 200 mils of the 0 0.15 molarity solution of NaOH. What compound is going to be in this one, right? Am I going to choose HCl? Am I going to choose NaOH? Who's going to be here? Well, this is like last chapter, guys, right? Or the stoichiometry chapter that everybody loves. <laughs> this is the limiting reactant. If you have information about two reactants, you first need to identify which one is the limiting. The limiting reactant is going to be the one that's in here. So I got to find out the limiting reactant. Now, how do we do that, right? We did tons of problems like that. The thing we have to turn these into are quantity numbers. And if I have molarity and I have mils, I can use my formula, molarity equals moles over liters, to find out how many moles I have. And then I can do that little chart that we did before. Remember, guys, where we say I have and I need? So let's just quickly find the moles. Now, the thing is, remember, with the molarity formula, we need to get liters. So we need to convert both of these molarities into liters. We know how to do that, right? We're just going to divide each one by 1,000. 
So 100 mils divided by 1,000, I get 0 0.100 liters. And then for 200 mils, I divide by 1,000, or move the decimal over to the left, I get 0 0.200 liters. Now let's find how many moles of each I have here. Now if I just rearrange that formula, moles equals molarity times liters. So for the HCl, I'm going to do 0 0.25 times 0 0.100, right? So let's see, how many moles of HCl will I have? I'm just going to move the decimal over once to the left. So it would be 0 0.025 moles. And then if I do the same for the NaOH, use the same formula, plug in their numbers, 0 0.15 times 0 0.200, I get moles equal, I think this is going to be 0 0.03, yeah, 0 0.03 moles of the NaOH. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm going to use these numbers instead of the volume and the molarity. So basically I can erase everything except for the moles, and that's what I'm going to use to do my little chart to find the limiting reactant. So pause the video if you need this information, but I'm gonna erase it. And I'm gonna erase basically everything from here. So bye-bye. And I'm just gonna say that now I have 0.025 moles of the HCl, and I have 0.03 moles of the NaOH. And now this goes bye-bye. Okay, now let's set up that chart. Right? Whenever we have to find the limiting reactant, just chart it out. Make that little chart here, right? The tops are the I have. So I have 0 0.025 moles of HCl, and I have 0 0.03 moles of NaOH. So I need to find out how much I need, right? So it doesn't matter which one you figure out. I usually just start in the top left, and I will find out how many moles of NaOH I need by doing stoichiometry. So let's go. 0 0.025 moles of HCl times by the ratio. Throw the moles of HCl on the bottom. Right, it always goes on the opposite side. And then moles of NaOH goes on top because I want to plug in what this number is. A mole to mole relationship of the different compounds is always the balanced equation. Now, this equation is balanced. You could pause the video if you want to double check. And if that's the case, there are no numbers that I see in front of the HCl and the NaOH. That means that there is one, right, for each one of them. So, one mole of NaOH is equal to one mole of HCl. Cancel out the moles of HCl. Technically, we need 0 0.025 moles of NaOH. And that's the answer that goes here. So 0 0.025 moles of the NaOH. Now pause the video again if you need this information because this is going bye-bye. Bye. Because all we need is to just compare now what's going on here in terms of whether I'm going to have excess or is all of it going to be used up. Let's see. If I have 0 0.03 moles, and I only need 0 0.025 moles, if this all gets used up and I have 0 0.03, will I have excess? What do you think, guys? Yeah, there's going to be some left over, right? There's going to be some excess left over. If I have more than what I need, this number is lower than what I have, I'm going to have some excess over. So if you have excess, this is not the limiting reactant. The other reactant is the limiting one. So we basically did all this information to just figure out that we're going to take HCl's values and not NaOH's. How fun. <laughs> so once again, pause the video, right? I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to say that the NaOH was the excess one. So I do not care about those numbers. So if you want, you could even just get rid of it. I'm just going to keep it on the screen that we don't care about this. 
and the HCL is the limiting. So that's why I'm going to only take HCL's values. So to answer the question of who I'm going to use here, I'm going to use HCL. And now, what's the number that goes in the front? How many moles of HCL equals 58 kilojoules? That goes with the number that is in the front of the balanced equation. So in this case, it is 1. Chances are a lot of them, they're going to be 1 mole, but just make sure. If there was a 2 in front of here, you would say 2 moles of HCL for every 58 kilojoules that were released. Okay, now I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to use HCL's information. In this case, I have 0 0.025 moles of HCL, and I'm going to just find out how much heat is produced from the 0.25 moles of HCL using this relationship. This is going to be used in dimensional analysis. I have a mole and a, a, a heat value, right? Kilojoules. So times by the ratio, mole of HCL goes on the bottom, kilojoules goes up on top, and now we just said over here, for every one mole of HCL, negative 58 kilojoules, the negative represents that it's being released. So if you want to keep the negative in there, that's fine with me. Negative 58 kilojoules for every one mole of HCL, get rid of the moles of HCL, and now you have the heat amount. So 0 0.025 times 58. I get negative 1.45 kilojoules. Now remember, the negative just means released, right? But how much was actually produced? 1.45 kilojoules were actually produced. So maybe I will put that, uh, I, th I think I have enough room for the next problem. So what was produced? 1.45 kilojoules, okay. Now, next question. Here we go. I'm putting all this over here. And actually, I think maybe what I can do is I can do that. Then I have way more space to work uh, with the second part of the question. Okay. So now, if both solutions are at the same temp and the heat capacity of the products is 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius, how much will the temperature change? All right. Now, the question is asking for how much will the temperature change? They didn't give me any temps. They just said that they're both staying, you know, starting at the same temp. But I'm looking for whether it's an increase or decrease, right? So that's a delta T. The change in temp is always delta T. So I'm solving for a delta T value here, all right? Now, there's a little bit of a problem here, guys. They said that the heat capacity of the products was 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. But if we're using the true form of a heat capacity, this is not the correct units for heat capacity. I think what the question was asking for is, or, or saying, is that this was the specific heat capacity. I think they maybe just left out the word specific. So I'm going to treat this as if this was a specific heat because joules per gram degree Celsius is a specific heat capacity, not just a heat capacity. They're two totally different things. And remember, capacity. And remember, the specific heat capacity is represented by an S. In our case, right, we've been using S's. Heat capacity is represented as capital C. So that's why they're two totally different things. So now I say to myself, okay, I'm looking for a delta T. I have an S value, right? I, I just found out how much heat is produced. Oh, I know what formula this is. It's Q equals M S delta T, right? I'm solving for the delta T, which means that technically I should know the three different uh, other variables, right? I should know Q, I should know M, and I should know S. Well, the S we just talked about, right? The specific heat they told us, 4.19 uh, joules per gram degrees Celsius. And the Q value is a heat value. And the heat that was produced was 1.45 kilojoules. 
But the thing is, guys, remember, if we're using this, it has to be in joules. So for right now, I'm going to put the kilojoules, but you do have to convert to joules. How do we go from kilojoules to joules? We just times by a thousand, right? So just take that number, multiply by 1,000, move the decimal over three times. So this would be 1,450 joules. Okay, let me just do that in the calc so that I have the number ready to go when I do my formula. Now, the only thing that we didn't talk about is the mass, right? And for this formula, mass has to be in grams. The only thing I know now here is that I have moles, right? And, you know, moles of HCl and moles of NaOH. Now, this is a solution. I'm mixing two things together. So technically, um, we need to find out the total mass. But that's why they gave us the density. The density of both of these compounds, HCl and NaOH, is one gram per mil. So that means that for as many grams as you have, the milliliters are the same, right? One gram equals one milliliter. So if I have 100 mils of HCl, this basically tells me that I have whoop, 100 grams. And if I have 200 mils of the NaOH because of the density, I have 200 grams. So the total mass would just be the combined masses of the two. So it would be the 100 grams of the HCl plus the 200 grams of the NaOH. So you have a total mass of 300 grams, right? 100 plus 200 is 300. And now we're ready to do the formula. Let's do it. 1450 equals 300. Somebody must be at the door, but we got to work through distractions. <laughs> So 300 times 4.19 times delta T, or you could just say that this is X, right? So I'm just going to label it as X. And maybe I'll just do this. Boop. All right, so solve for X. First, we have to multiply, right, the 300 by the 4.19. So let's do that. 300 times 4.19. 1257. And that's times x, divide by 1257 on both sides, and we should be good to go. Cancel this out. 1450 divided by 1257. I get roughly, if we do, uh, in this case, I mean, I guess we'll do three sig figs. So we'll say 1.15. I don't really care about sig figs. I'm just kind of rounding. Maybe your teacher or professor doesn't care either. Hopefully. <laughs> so I get 1.15. And that's your delta T. So the change in temp only increased by 1.15 degrees Celsius. And that is your answer for the second part. Now, the thing with the next thing is says, what assumption did you make in your calculation? So... There was a couple of things here, right? I assumed that, you know, this the heat capacity that they were talking about was the specific heat capacity, right? I'm assuming also that all of the heat that was produced is in uh, the heat that was transferred. So there was absolutely no heat that was lost. So all the heat that was produced by the reaction was all transferred to the heat of the solution. Um, and I also assumed that, you know, we're taking the total amount of mass in the solution. So 100 grams plus 200 grams. And those should be all of your assumptions. I'm not going to write this down, obviously, because it would take all, you know, a lot of time. So I'm just talking it out to you guys. But that's basically it. All right. So thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Click the subscribe button if you want to help us out. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys, all right? I really want you to do well. And let's keep working hard. You got this. Chem is not scary. Just a little bit of math. But I got you guys, all right? See you in later lessons. Bye-bye.